Lulu, CGTN, Beijing. Well, for more on online influences amid the global pandemic, I'm joined live via Skype from San Francisco by Krishna Subramanian. He's the co-founder of Captivate, a company connecting brands to digital influencers. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, a recent poll showed that 86% of young Americans want to become an influencer, so clearly it's a very popular path for many. So how much of an impact has this pandemic had on the industry? Um, great, great question. I, I think when we look at social influencers and the type of engagement they're getting uh, post-pandemic, it's been incredible. You've started to see Facebook comments increase by over 20%, Instagram video views increasing by over 30 to 40%, Instagram likes are up 40%. So the engagement has really grown across these different social platforms. Um, so that's you know a, a positive side. On the brand side, you know brands are definitely concerned about when they should be partnering with influencers. So you're seeing increase in spend happening from certain categories of brands. And you're also seeing some brands put uh, influencer budgets and sort of push them to, to Q3. So then you mentioned a couple of things. So let's actually look at the markets and the sectors that are benefiting the most from this online consumption during social distancing and lockdown orders. What are the standouts? So the, the categories that are growing, you know, fairly significantly, let's say from a brand standpoint, it's definitely the CPG space, uh, the pharma and healthcare, fitness um, is growing as well. Um, so those advertisers are seeing um, seeing just you know products fly off the shelves, and they're really making use of influencers to help build that trust uh, with their products during this time period. So then let's also look at the influencers. Then, with so many people online right now consuming all kinds of content, how should influencers really capitalize on this time? Yeah, um, I think influencers should just continue to create really authentic content. Um, focus on what they're what they're good at, what their trade is, why they became famous. Because you know, day-to-day -day consumers and their fans um, want, want to step away from the, the news that they see around the crisis, and they want to be able to follow their favorite DIY influencer or their favorite fitness influencer. Um, I think looking at you know different live uh, live streaming platforms. So Instagram Live has definitely increased and really surged over the the last couple months. Um, same thing goes for Twitch and YouTube Live. Um, so I think the live platforms are, are something to definitely focus on. Now, Instagram is where people go to escape or, or discover their tribe, but you also don't want to be tone deaf about the seriousness of what's happening. What's the best way for influencers to balance the reality of what's going on with their established brands and messaging? Yeah, yeah I think that's a really good question. So a lot of what we're seeing is when these influencers are partnering with brands, there's two types of messaging that they're talking about. The first is the assurance message. It is when they're saying, hey, you know, this is Toyota or this is Nissan. We're going to be here for you during this period. We understand it's 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 difficult for everyone to go through, but as a brand, we're here for you. The second is purpose-driven uh, marketing, and this is when influencers are telling the story of, let's say, Peloton giving 90 days free uh, memberships or DoorDash providing free delivery services. So those are the two different types of messages that are happening, and it's really important for these influencers to go out and um, and tell the that you know social good um, story. So with this obviously a shock to the system, are brands likely to change their strategies moving forward once the pandemic is over? Or do you think this could mark a bigger shift away further from traditional advertising? Um, it, you know, great question. I think when we're looking at what is happening with a lot of the the traditional brands in in China and how they've recovered and what they've really done, um, you know, we're seeing a huge push on e-commerce. E we're seeing a huge push on performance-driven social, um, you know, and I think what what you can expect to see is as influencers really help these brands relaunch in the coming quarter and tell that story of why this brand is is you know is good. Um, I think you'll start to see a lot of performance and programmatic um, data put behind the influencer content themselves, and I think it's something that's just going to be uh, more important as we look at marketing throughout the end of this year. And just quickly, we did see that there was a lot of pent-up spending energy in China when the lockdown ended. We saw luxury brands like LVMH seeing a rise in spending there. Do you think we'll see the same thing happen in the U.S. and other markets? Um, I definitely, definitely agree. Um, I, I think we're going to see very similar results to what has happened in, in, in Asia and other markets um, in, in the U.S. I think we're already seeing some of these luxury brands start to experiment on TikTok. 
Uh, for example, Prada has recently done something on TikTok, which you might not normally expect. Um, but I, I think as these brands start to come out and become more comfortable, um, you know, telling these stories, I think influencers are definitely going to be leading the way with the luxury market as well. All right. Thank you for your insights. Krishna Subramanian there, co-founder of Captivate. Thank you. Well, used to his art being seen out on the streets, Banksy...